welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about the four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And in that light, I'm always scouring the globe, looking for entrepreneurs, coaches on the cutting edge, changing the world and making an impact. So today we have uh, Vincent um, and he goes by Vinny and he's a therapist, he's a mentor and he's a coach. And um, he, his motto is cultivate the change you want to see in your life. And so we're going to talk about fulfillment, showing up powerfully, communication, success. So it's going to be a great conversation. And let's welcome Vinny to the show. Welcome. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I know we had connected through Podmatch. It's been a great uh, tool. Tell us more about your story, your background, and how you got started. Sure. So my whole life was pretty much filled with adversity. I went through a lot of interpersonal issues that I had to deal with, which was overcoming depression, overcoming anxiety, panic attacks, uh, had a lot of suicidal ideation when I was younger. And these were all things that I believed used to determine or define my life at that time. So I had been finding ways to really reinvent myself, trying to give you the abridged version. I know we don't have a long time here, <laughs> but I was trying to find ways to basically reinvent myself. And I went through college. I did pretty good externally. Everything was looking great. I started working out. I started getting attention from people. I, I grew up from that outcast that was in all the other younger grades getting thrown in trash cans and dealing with bullying to now kind of creating this new version of myself that was really cool and really exciting to me. However, that never really fixed the internal issues. I was still struggling. People couldn't really tell, right? Like I looked like I had it all. By the time I was 23 years old, I was the youngest person in my school. I graduated with my master's at 23, started doing uh, psychotherapy, and it seemingly continued to look like I had everything together, right? I had a nice car. I had a hot girlfriend. I just graduated. I was ready to start my career. What could be possibly wrong in my life except for my mindset? Through this, I had a great moment that changed the whole trajectory of my life. And this one moment would then set me on that whole entire trajectory to learn how to master my mindset, unlock my inner leader. That's what I call it. And that's how I teach people. And it really helped me overcome these feelings of anxiety, depression. It helped me become a more capable person in life, helped me start leading others and showing people how they too can start unlocking their own basis of freedom. And uh, it really was the the course to, well, just sitting here speaking to you right now, being this guy that you're interviewing. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you have a you know very fantastic turnaround story. And um, so what do you what do you think it was? It was was it uh, co- was it mindset? Was it coaching peer group? Um, tell us how you sort of got unstuck and and rose f- uh, uh, from the ashes. Sure. Well, I, I like to call this, uh, it's a story I call the moment in the mirror, because that's actually what it was. It's not a very creative title. It's just the truth. It was this, this one day after I graduated uh, from my master's and I was just still freaking frustrated, man. I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is wrong with me? I got every, I seemingly have everything, right? And you know, there's not much grace in today's society for people who look like they have a lot, but still feel depressed. So I didn't really know who to talk to. My therapist wasn't very helpful. And I remember I was just super frustrated and I had slammed my hands down on this counter in, in the bathroom of my parents' house. And I was just looking at myself and I was like, you know, what the hell's wrong? Like, why do I still feel this way? I've accomplished so much. I've done so much. I thought that would make me feel better. It never did. You know, I have the girlfriend, I got the car, I have the, I have the career. What's the issue? And I couldn't figure it out. But all of a sudden, I can't even tell you how I got to the conclusion, but all of a sudden, it just kind of snapped for me. Now, I'll tell you what's snapped, but I want to preface it with this. When I transitioned from high school to college, because I didn't like the life circumstances I was experiencing, because I didn't like myself from getting bullied and feeling all of these negative emotions... I shifted. And what I did was I made a very small change. On my college transcript, instead of going in as Vincent, I wrote Vincenzo. And that two-letter change gave me a whole new identity. But it didn't actually change anything about me, right? It's just a name. 
But with the name comes a cool identity. And so that moment in the mirror that I'm referring to, if we're jumping back there, I looked at myself and I realized you're Vincent. That was what I said to myself. I just looked in the mirror and I said, you're Vincent. And that was the first time in seven years that I actually said my own name, my real name. And why that was so powerful was because that was a level of self-acceptance that I hadn't had in a very, very long time. You see, the reason I did that shift and wrote Vincenzo was because I was trying to escape what my life was. I wasn't happy. I didn't like it. I didn't want to be a part of it. I thought that if that guy died, I could create someone new. But what I didn't realize was that I actually had to embrace that person. And Mm -hmm. that's what was missing from my life. Mm -hmm. And so what that wound up snowballing into was a few concepts that I've really learned and embraced today and, and have found to create massive transformation in my life was radical self acceptance. Everything that has happened has happened. You can't change it. Everything that has happened or that is currently going on is a result of all the decisions you made plus everything that's happened. And everything that can happen can be created by you if you're willing to take extreme ownership right now and say, I have the power to create the life I want instead of allowing yourself to be dragged through it, which then goes into this other piece of self-mastery, understanding what you can control and what you can't, focusing on what you can do and letting go of what you can't. And then coming into this aspect of unlocking your inner leader, right? So I like to look at leadership as it's not a title, it's not a position, it's not a role. What leadership truly is, is how you show up in life. It's the identity that you embody and the way that you show up in that identity. What is the powerful presence you bring? And so as I really, I I mean, at the time, right at 23, I didn't understand any of that. But as I reflect back, I can now spit it out a little bit more defined and clear to you. But at 23, all I knew was that I needed to get back to calling myself Vincent and start making some changes in my life. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, um, when they when they uh, start to this process of self discovery and self um, development, um, they run away from their pain. You know, either they're abused or bullied, or you know. Uh, and but you talk about you pain is your potential. So the greater the pain, the greater yeah. the potential. Elaborate on that. Sure. Well, you see, pain is, is your opportunity for growth, right? When you think about and there's so many animals that go through this. Snakes molt their skin, right? Crabs molt their shells. Uh, you have, what is it, caterpillars. They go into a little cocoon and then they 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 grow out of that cocoon even bigger and they're butterflies. And I don't know if those are painful for these creatures. I honestly have no idea. I'm sure maybe a little. But the reason that they do this is because they grow bigger than who they currently are, Right. And if we look at problems, your problems are your shells if you're a crab (laughs) or your skin if you're a snake or your cocoon if you're a butterfly. Because what winds up happening is these are your opportunities. It's saying you need to become bigger than you currently are to overcome the current thing you're going through. I actually like to tell people that you can't actually fix a problem. You never fix problems. The only thing you do is you outgrow them. And why? Because to be able to, quote unquote, fix a problem, you need to actually figure out the answer. And if you didn't have the answer, that's why it's a problem. But once you find the answer, you no longer have a problem, right? But how do you get to that space where you find the answer? Well, that requires you to do a few different things. could require you to change physically, mentally, emotionally. You might have to learn something. You might have to even become a completely different person if you want to fix the problem in your life. So- It's actually, that's the concept I've always taken now and and try to really tell people is like, you don't fix problems, you outgrow them. And so when you're going through pain, it's a growing pain. It's challenging you to grow and become bigger and more than you currently are so that your life circumstances change. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea because, you know, it's like, uh, I think um, this idea where, you know, everything, we think everything has to be perfect, but it's actually the problems are still around there. It's just how we react to it and you know, how we manage it. And in this idea where you're growing and you're kind of in this mental, emotional, energetic space where you, you know, those don't bother you anymore. You've learned to deal, you've outgrown them. So uh, of course. Some, sometimes, uh, you know, audiences, listener, listeners, uh, you know, victim mindset, uh, you know, everything is happening to me, you know, COVID and, 
you know, lockdowns and recession, all, all this. Uh, how do you help uh, people get out of this victim mindset? Well, first, it's about kind of understanding where it is, right? I think that today's society has done a terrible job of educating people on why they do what they do. For instance, I'm just going to, I'm going to digress real quick to just give a teachable moment here. Depression. When we look at depression, right? Nowadays in society, what do people say? If you're experiencing depression, it's okay. You could lay in bed as long as you need, feel sad as long as you want, and take this medication so you feel happy, right? That's like today's standard for depression. If you look back, there's this thing, it's called analytical rumination hypothesis. You could look into it and is the research of why depression was formed in our ancestors, how it actually served a function and a purpose. And the whole term analytical rumination stands for just that. Depression comes about when there's something in your life that is persistently a problem that we have not solved yet. So depression actually forces you to draw inwards so that you could spend time with yourself, right? If anyone ever noticed when you're depressed, what's the last thing you want to do? Anything for anybody. <laughs> it forces you to turn inwards. And why? It's because it's trying to have you analyze and ruminate on what is persistently wrong in your life so you can come to a solution and it helps. It like gets rid of your depression. Same thing with anxiety. And, and these are all pieces of victim mentality, right? We look at anxiety. Anxiety is brought about because we're perceiving a threat in our natural environment. We talk about the fight, flight, or freeze response, right? We might have people might have heard of this before. And this is a response to a perceived threat. So the reason I wanted to talk about that is because you can't really get out of victimhood if you don't understand how these behaviors are even there, because these behaviors are going to be a part of your victimhood experience, but they're there for a reason. So if you don't come to the solutions of why they're there or why they're formed, or even more importantly, how they're there to help you, you're going to be stuck in this victim mentality. Now, to really get out of the victim mentality comes back to kind of what I was talking about before. And this is mindset mastery. So mindset mastery is just understanding where you need to shift your focus. Now, you might have heard of this concept before if you've ever read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's a great concept, and it's super simple to comprehend. It is talking about your circle of influence and your circle of concern. So what I've come to understand, the circle of influence is a proactive focus where it puts emphasis on what you can do. And then the circle of concern is a reactive focus where seemingly you're spending time emphasizing everything around you and there's no focus on the inwards. So what you start feeling is helpless and powerless because you're focused on everything you can't control. Now, to really get into the bottom of this, you have to figure out what you can control. So I've identified that there's five things you can control in any situation in life. And if you can't control all five, you can at least control one. So these five things are this, your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, your actions, and the language you use to describe situations or circumstances in life. And you may not have access to all five right away, but if you find one, it expands to two and then three and four and five. And when your circle of influence grows, your circle of concern shrinks and you gain more control. Conversely, if you focus on things you can control and your circle of concern continues to grow, your circle of influence shrinks. And that's when people get wrapped up in victimhood because they don't know how to shift back to taking their power and putting emphasis on the things that they actually can influence and control in their lives. Hmm. Interesting. And then, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's in for the audience, you know, this, it's kind of like how you snap out of it and get out of it and, um, and, uh, how you di direct your, uh, your focus and your thoughts, you know, to lead to better outcomes. Um, you know, very, uh, interesting. Um, so, and you've, you've, you've had this really, um, very, uh, interesting, very, um, fascinating story, you know, very empowering story. And then now you're living a life of a alignment. So when your clients or people listening, when they say describe what a life of alignment is, it kind of uh, shed some light or describe what it is so they can kind of get a feeling of, what, of it. Sure. I would say, and, and this is probably just my personal opinion, right? But I would say a life of alignment is living a life that, that you've created based on the decisions that you've made that you're proud of. So every day I wake up and I, I've done I've done my own personal mission statement. You work with business owners, right? Or you talk about business. So I'm sure you and mostly probably many of your audience have to know what a mission statement is because a mission statement is the foundation of every good company, 
If any of you are listening out there and you don't have a mission statement, your company is probably not that great. Uh, jokes aside, though, <laughs> jokes aside, in addition to having a business mission statement, I have a personal mission statement. See, my business mission statement is to impact 1 billion lives. My personal mission statement is to show up as the best version of myself hmm. for my daughter, my girlfriend, for my family, my, you know, show up as a brother, as a son, show up in all these different roles. And I ask myself, what would I do to be proud of fulfilling each role? What would I do if I wanted to live a life of design instead of a life I felt like I was being dragged through? And so getting very clear and very concise on what you want out of life and then taking the steps and the directions in that direction is super important. A lot of people don't do that. I mean, I had one of the most coveted jobs before I became an entrepreneur. I was a New York City firefighter. There's over 80,000 applicants every four years to get this New York City firefighting job. I got it. I was one of the top. I was number 1217 on a list of 80,000, and they only call about 5,000 people every four years. So if you can imagine, it's extremely competitive. I gave that up to pursue entrepreneurship because that's what my heart told me. And I faced a lot of adversity. I faced people not believing in me. I faced people saying, you're ungrateful. You got such a great job and you say you want more. Like you're, un you're an ungrateful person. Uh, I was told I should have I should have given that job opportunity to someone who really wanted it. You know, like there was so many things. And funny enough, that, that job opportunity, becoming a firefighter, that was a childhood dream of mine. Mm. And I did it and I experienced it. But I felt I felt so much more called to do what I'm currently doing. That's why I did it. So I would say living a life of alignment to sum it up with a nice bow on top, is just making decisions that you believe, one, will make you happy, two, are in alignment with the values you hold, three, keep you accountable to your mission in life, and four, that you actually just feel good about. Because if you make decisions and you don't feel good about them, you're probably not living a life of alignment. In fact, you're probably making decisions based on other people's perceptions of you or beliefs about what you should or should not do. And that is the easiest and quickest way to pull yourself out of alignment. Mm, yeah, this is a, you know, same thing with, uh, you know, a lot of doctors, you know, listening to this podcast, you know, their parents or their spouses, you know, that have been told to do this. And, you know, a lot of them want to be entrepreneurs and, you know, you get this backlash, you know, ungrateful that you described. So it sounds like the, 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 the rhyme and patterns are all the same. So, um, yeah, yeah really great work and how, how do people follow you and um uh contact you uh visit your socials etc sure well anyone can find me um anywhere on google honestly if you just put in vincent infante you're gonna find a lot of me or vin infante you will find me on tiktok or instagram or twitter as vin infante uh, i'm the dude that that's like mindset you'll you'll see me i pop up pretty easily there's not a lot of vin infantes doing mindset work yeah. and uh you could go to my website it's www .life. Um, and i have free resources on there so you could check those out download them they're they're pretty cool i created them myself so that's why i think they're cool you might not but hey somebody likes them and it's me yeah awesome interview um for all the listeners out there um uh, Vin, Vinny's on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, as well as he's got a free vision board as well um, uh, on vincentinfante.life. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And thanks so much. It's really a pleasure to have you. And thanks so much for your time and expertise. Thanks for having me, Chris.